Okay, today is uh, November 18 of 2014. We want to take a look at uh, Alexander Kojiv, and we're going to look at a document that he dedicated uh, entirely to the uh, concept of authority, but uh, it's also a document that was never intended to be published as a book or to be made available to the public at all. It was a, a, a private correspondence that he used simply for dialogue between himself and friends that he had in French government. So it's really a dialogue piece or a, a position piece on authority and government that he shared with friends that he had in the French government. But after his death, the manuscript did find its way into publication. And initially that was uh, in 2004. It was published in French. And then in, not until now, 2014, it finally reached... Uh, English publication. So it's taken its time, it's, since it was written around uh, 1942, it's taken quite a while for it to uh, actually make it into uh, English publication, but that's uh, due primarily to the fact that Kojiv has become extremely uh, important for postmodern thought and the development of postmodern thinking with his uh, reinterpretation of the philosophy of Hegel that uh, took up the master-slave parable and applied it to all of Hegel's thought. That book raised up Kojiv to a great recognition of prominence within the field of postmodern thought. And so the manuscripts like these have been sought out and finally reached publication. Now if we look at uh, the notion of authority... The good news is that Koji says that he's going to uh, approach it. He tells us right up front he's going to approach it the same way that he approached um, Hegel's work. He's going to approach it as phenomenology. And then after he uh, begins with phenomenology, he will transition to uh, a new metaphysics. And then from a new metaphysics, he will transition to uh, an extended look in ontology. And from ontology, he'll move on to praxis. So his, uh, his methodology doesn't change from what he did with Hegel. And so it gives us uh, a good groundwork. As long as we're familiar with what he did with Hegel, we can approach this 100-page uh, treatise and at least have a, a foundation upon which to build to help us uh, organize what is really a fairly brief outline. And so we need to have a foundation to kind of fill in the blanks because it was never written as a complete book. And it is a, an outline, really an outline, almost like a proposal of a book. But it's an outline of his uh, theory on the notion of authority. Now, Kojiv says that we begin with uh, primarily living in a world where we face pre-existing authority figures and pre-existing um, power models. Authority figures and power models. Power models consist of... a uh, the theological scholastic model of a absolute authority belonging to God, the Platonic model of authority being justice-based and empowered by the concept of justice, the Aristotle model, um, authority is empowered by gnosis and education, and then finally the Hegelian model, of course, which he preferred. Authority is uh, empowered by the developed self-consciousness, of uh, the reciprocal relationship between the master and the slave self. So you've got uh, four existing power models of authority that already exist in reality that already confront us. And there are agent modalities that can be looked at within a subjective point of view. And these are the uh, modality of father, which takes up the authority of tradition, the modality of master, which takes up the authority of uh, of the ideal over the uh, praxis slave and consciousness, or the modality of leader, which takes up the authority of an eschatological project that uh, an individual wants to put into force. And then finally, the uh, modality of judge, which uh, for Kojiv, you're going to find that uh, the entire book presupposes that the modality of judge is the uh, phronetic stance or motivational stance that we have as individuals that we hold all the time. We always begin whatever our approach is to authority 
Our stance, our point of standing in at the threshold of any dialogue, is one of a, the generic concept of justice. Our motivational base is the generic concept of justice, period. So the modality of judge is a, a generic modality that applies at all times. So we've got the, uh, the theological, the Platonic, the Aristotelian, the Hegelian power models. We have the father, the master, the leader, and the judge for subjective uh, agents of authority. But he says we, we face these objective and subjective examples every day. They already exist. We don't have to really supply them. They're already existent in the world that we face, in the history that we face. So because of this, Koji says the first thing that happens is uh, to the self is the self becomes a nominated self. We become a nominated self, and this is uh, our awakening or being awakened existentially to a nomination to a leader authority. To We are awakened to a leader modality of of the authority agent, and so we, we become nominated. We are uh, passively receptive of this nomination. But once we receive this nomination, then we take it up in an active way. But we are uh, already in existence confronted by a collective authority based on previous projects that have taken place. So no matter who we are, there's already a collective authority that's present in our historical situation that is a composite or a... Uh, intersubjective uh, collective authority based on previous eschatological projects, ethical projects that have taken place. This collective authority makes possible a conditioned genesis of authority in the self, a conditioned genesis of authority, which is mediated through primarily guidelines that are present in our situation or advice, but fundamentally we only need to look at one term. Fundamentally, uh, the conditioned genesis of the authority moment of being nominated into an authority is through education. Fundamentally, as an individual, we are educated into the collective authority that is already present in our historical situation. We are educated into it from uh, our first day of reaching an age of accountability and uh, the ability to uh, reflect cognitively we enter into this a collective authority that educates us and nominates us as a, a, a active leader self that can participate within this authority, this collective authority, by taking up our own eschatological ethical project to help realize the ideal. So it does uh, demand that we take up the role of an agent, it does ask us to commit the authoritative act or project. And it does uh, ask us to perceive in his history the possibilities that are available for this eschatological project. So uh, there's already this uh, desire on the part of the self to find possibilities of recognition that might be available in history for this ideal ethical project that we want to posit. And we want to do that out of a, the new collective authority that we now participate in as a leader self. So we move from uh, being an, the passive nominated self to becoming the active leader self. Now, as the active leader self, we are uh, interested in developing our own universal ethical project. And uh, we want to posit this within the temporal structure. But we also realize that it will demand a more in-depth understanding of what we're trying to do than simply the surface data. So we are at once concerned with the, the more fundamental um, existential and metaphysical, or if you just want to uh, sum that up, the eternal aspects of this uh, finite and temporal positing that we want to do. We also want the deeper truth that's available uh, as we seek to further understand this collective authority that we are now a part of, but now we are a part of as an active leader self. 
So we transition out of the passive nomination and enter into the active leader self with the eschatological project. And that takes us directly into dialogue. It takes us directly into community uh, with those with whom we share the collective authority and with those outside of the collective authority. We do enter into dialogue and uh, we enter into uh, taking up uh, quite a few different modalities within this dialogue. We become the, uh, the self of the moment, representing the real presence of what's available for us in our project. The uh, self of the past, which uh, takes up the uh, poetic, it's primarily poetic, Kojiv says. It kind of gets uh, taken up in a poetic, idealistic way. We take up the past, uh, poetic past, of the collective authority we participate in. We're also the self of the future, and we are much aware of the uh, inertia provided by the utopian outlook or the eschatolog eschatological outlook of the project we intend. So we do enter in with the uh, self of the moment, self of the past, and self of the future as uh, modalities of dialogue that we will engage in. But all three of those temporal authorities stand in opposition to the authority of eternity, which is uh, the more fundamental um, conceptual or ideal idea standing behind our temporal project that we posit. And in order to purge our proposed ideal ethical project of any uh, contingencies or um, egoistic based finite aspects, we do this through the dialogue that helps us to reach the deeper, more universal truth that applies to all individuals and helps us to realize the true goal of our collective authority. And that comes through dialogue and through that stance. Remember, there is a stance at the threshold of dialogue, and that is always the judge. It is always, for Kojiv, it is always the stance, the phronetic stance of the generic concept of justice that is our primary motivational base for every ethical ideal that we want to posit. So we are interested in purging away the egoistic interest of the day, the distorted opinion of the past, and the utopian, purely utopian desire of the future, and help us to reach a, a more pure, uh, what Kojiv calls the integrated eternal ideal of justice. Through dialogue, we want to form the integrated eternal idea of justice that will shape our eschatological ethical project as a leader self. So once we reach that point, and once we uh, engage in this dialogue, we're ready to move on to a more authoritative stance uh, concerning that which we want to propose. And so the authoritative self is going to align with what uh, Kojiv had previously discussed with Hegel in that realm that uh, defines the notion of the true. The notion of the true, as you remember from Kojiv on Hegel, that is the master self that constructs the ideal. The master self is the in itself of the ideal before it goes out of itself as the slave self. So, in this realm of the uh, notion of the true, we are involved in a, this desire to posit this notion of authority that we have constructed. And we do have a, a willingness to take on the decisive project of positing. But uh, we also realize that that means we have to go out of ourself in order to do that and into the concrete world. And therefore, the element of risk this is the moment of the insertion of the element of risk. Risk gets inserted where that axis flip is going to take place, and slave self takes priority over master self, the constructor of the ideal. The praxis positing will involve a risk where we have no guarantee of a recognition, of a favorable recognition of that which we want to posit as our contribution to the uh, collective authority that we are now a part of. And so we do take on that risk, but uh, it is the moment of where the 
master self is willing to penetrate into the finitude of reality and the concrete historical reality as the slave self and coupled with that stance of the generic concept of justice and then to work toward a return that will involve risk but hopefully will reach a moment of recognition where we can kind of gain an intersubjective recognition for our contribution to the overall collective authority that we have been nominated into. And that brings us, of course, before we enter into the world of praxis, uh, as we learned from before from Kojiv, and he's consistent here, we pass through the axis point, and the axis point is where the axis flip takes place, and the ideal master self flips in priority, and priority is given to the uh, a praxis-based slave self that wants to uh, enter into concrete reality in action and reflection within a concrete historical situation. Now in this document, Kojiv says that uh, realization through praxis is basically a realization of a causality, but it's a diversified causality. He says there's a, we end up with an efficient cause, which is the actual axis flip of giving the slave self priority. There's a material cause of the inertia of the existential memory from uh, that which was previously held in its latency with the collective authority. There's a final cause, which is the eschatological trajectory of the project that we are proposing and the way that that eschatological inertia enters and penetrates finitude. And then there's the contemplative cause of the uh, phonetic stance of the just of the generic concept of justice that we never evacuate. So there is a, a diversity of uh, efficient cause, material cause, final cause, and contemplative cause that make up the praxis moment of realization. So for Gojiv, that brings us to a, an important point. We get involved in this uh, actual uh, actualization of the eschatological project of the leader self who has become the authoritative self who has formed the ideal as the master self and who has uh, particularized and created a concrete positing as a slave self now realizes that positing in four diversified elements of causality and that results in what eventually is going to be the return. Hopefully the return for recognition, but the return is going to be a, primarily for Kojiv, the return is always a return of education. Fundamentally, according to Kojiv, our frenetic stance is always justice, and we always are on a quest to uh, inform other selves of this uh, priority of the generic concept of justice as the critique of our authority. So he summarizes his, he closes with just some simple deductions, but he says basically the nominated self in the passive sense is going to become the nominating genesis self to nominate others into this collective authority. So we're going to flip from uh, passive being nominated to actively nominating in a genesis type activity other selves within this collective authority. We do that by shaping and forming the ideal as the master self representing a, in this case the political state or political society in itself including the latent the theoretical articulation of authority and its tendency to become um, actualized through the slave self for recognition. So it's the formal conceptual model that's held in itself. And uh, this wants to go all of it, out of itself by activating and energizing the latency of the civil servant, which also rests here as that, that tendency to transition to the slave self.
And so when that does happen, we enter into this uh, positing of an authoritarian, authoritarian ethic, a collective of individual actions acquiring recognition and support for the ideal. It's our, our own positing coupled with uh, positings by other individuals within the same authoritative community. And it, it will include a positing that uh, is based out of the phronetic stance of justice. And it will always be complex, according to Kojiv. We never posit a isolated, pure type of authority. It's always complex. It always combines power models. And it always combines agent figures. So... It's always a complex model that gets positive. It's never a simplistic, uh, simple model. It's always a combination of power models and a combination of subjective uh, agent stances that we take, except the, for the generic stance of justice. We reach, Koji says, the citizen self as the educator, transmitting the existential memory to future nominated selves. So we... We, exit, we enter this process and move through this process as the educator. We are the educator, and the educator is the citizen self. We are the citizen self trying to persuasively educate other selves to enjoin in the ideal, ethical, collective authority that we have now been taken up into and become an active participant in. Although our beginning was passive, now we want to uh, enlist other selves to join the intersubjective process of, uh, first of all, becoming nominated. So we want to uh, educate others into that um, aggregate nominated cluster of selves. And then they will take up their leadership roles of pausing their own individual leader eschatological projects ethical projects, they will engage in dialogue with us uh, and with uh, those who have already been previously involved in the collective authority. And through that dialogue, they will develop their own individual authoritative stance. They'll form their own individualistic authoritative ideal, and they will want to find that uh, somehow to become recognized and to actually become substantiated, to actually become substance of the collective authority, but they can't do that until they pass through the axis flip and become a slave self and actually posit it into externality as a efficient cause, material cause, final cause, and contemplative cause. When they take up that quadruple causality of praxis, then they can find their own validation and recognition of their contribution and truly become part of the substance, true substantial substance of the collective authority. And so it's a, it is a circle, just like uh, the Hegelian model that uh, Kojiv gave us in his book on an intro to Hegel. It is a phenomenological circle of activity, but the phenomenology is primarily taking place as the nominated self and the leader self. The neo-metaphysic is the discovery of the eternal authority behind the temporal authority, which we discover in dialogue at the dialogue threshold. And then the ontological aspect is born as the master self constructs the ideal as a living organism model that has an overall collective authority and many subsystem authorities that play a part to that model. So we do go from phenomenology to a neo-metaphysic, to a, a ontological structure of ideal, and then the flip. We do get to that axis and perform the flip toward praxis and proceed through causality and then eventually return, hopefully, recognition for that which we have posited so that we can become a part of the true substantial substance of the ideal authority. So it is cyclical, again, just like uh, it was in Hegel. He didn't, uh, and that gave us some help because the book is difficult. It's, it really has a lot of empty spaces in it. 
but you can fill those in if you're very familiar with his intro to Hegel. You can get the larger picture and just fill on, anticipate on your own how to fill those spaces and you'll come up with what you need to come up with. But it is primarily going to be an examination of authority that centers on the development of a singular human self-consciousness and it will pass through his previous discussion of the master self and the slave self. And we did that in about 25 minutes. That's good. And I'll wrap up uh, The Notion of Authority by Alexander Kojiv, published this year in 2014 by Verso Press. We finally got it from a, from a 1942 work. Thank you.